upon today. Um, it's a special day in the year for a quick little conversation with you. Today is the eighth of the month of Menachem Av. Tonight is the beginning of the ninth of the month, which is known as Tisha B'Av, which is literally means the ninth of Av. Um, it is historically, as you may or may not know, a day of um, when many times throughout the, the millennia, really tragic things happen both to Jewish people and to people at large. Um, among those things were the destruction of the first temple in Jerusalem by the Babylonians and the destruction of the second temple in Jerusalem by the Romans, which precipitated this 2000, almost 2000 year exile that we are in the process of ending now. So it's very, um, there at Tisha B'Av is considered the, a day of mourning, a day of fasting, no eating or drinking from before sunset till after sunset the following day. And a, a lot of other laws, both in the days leading up to this day, which begins tonight and the day itself. And that's all because we want to align where we're, we're in, requested, the Torah requests us to align ourselves with actual events that happen in the world, why? Because everything happens as part of the evolution of humanity. Everything is happening as part of the building and metamorphosis process. So the big secret of Tisha B'Av, of this ninth of Av, is that um, it contains an enormous light. How enormous? It is considered the birthday of Mashiach, of the collective soul of all of humanity, the messianic redeemer. And whether that's physically, you know, somebody was actually born on that day, or whether the soul of Mashiach is, is created from the energy of that day, um, you know, that's up for discussion. But it's nevertheless, it, the point is that it contains such a great light, and you can feel it as the, 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 the darkness starts with a, a feeling of darkness and mourning, but as the day goes on tomorrow, the actual day, not the night, oftentimes in the afternoon of Tisha B'Av, I felt like a rising happiness. And um, I don't know if everybody feels that, but it's like a leaving of darkness and a moving into um, weeks of what's called the seven weeks of consolation. So the, there's a Torah reading, a prophecy reading, Haftarah, that was, that's read Shabbat that just passed. And um, that Shabbat is called Shabbat or Shabbos Chazon. Chazon means vision. And it's named after the, the reading of the prophet, which is the prophet Isaiah, which is a vision of desolation and destruction, like the warning to the people that weren't getting aligned with the divine purpose way back when, and even now. Everything repeats. These energies are cosmic and they repeat at all times. They're stuck to their days and their times and their events. Not stuck to, but they flow out, like as if you had a giant, all of the year was a giant like roulette wheel. Every time it spins one day, one hour, one minute, um, doors open of these energies that were connected to the day in the, the original day. So whether it's the days of the week, days of creation, the holidays of the year, the events, you know, cosmically through history. So the energy is opening into the world and then it spins around through the year, blending with all of the rest of the energy. So Tisha B'Av is, contains within it more potential in many ways for redemption than any other time. And that has to do with the idea of the outer and the inner. I've been talking about this concept from this book. <laughs> I love holding up this book because it's just, wow, life-changing. Ner Mitzvah the Torah or Midler Rebbe with the commentary of Rabbi Parcher. Anyway, Shari Yichud, this is the core of what I um, teach in the school for spiritual empowerment because it's transformational. It's the gate to divine unity. But I've been talking lately about a concept from this book of Davar Vihi Pucho, that everything that exists is made up of two polar opposites. So here we have in the concept of Tisha B'Av, of the ninth of Av, you wanna lean into the energy because it's real and it's coming into the world in a new way, like that roulette wheel image that the door of Tisha B'Av and everything that's the leading up to it is pouring in. So in Shabbos Chazon, this Shabbat of a, the vision of Isaiah of, of doom and desolation and the destruction, the Hasidic masters of the Rebbe, um, have interpreted that as very clearly that the inner message of it is that we're shown a vision of the future temple to be rebuilt in our times, in our times, which will be a portal between heaven and earth, will bring peace to the entire world, will be a house of, of prayer for all peoples, the portal of unity, 
So on this darkest day of the year, according to the Torah calendar, this day that had so much potential for destruction, that was the culmination of a whole three week period of the destruction of the temple. We have the consolation, we have the rectification, we have the restoration. And this time, because the work will have been done over such a long time to build the vessels, to do the alignment over these thousands of years. So it's going to be enough. We are going to be enough to receive and to hold and to shine an eternal infinite light while being in our finite bodies. So the inner and the outer, everything that's created is created as in these two polars, two poles, two polarities, two opposites, Dabarvi Pucho, one thing is made up of both sides. Like you can't have a coin that's just heads. You can't have a coin that's just tails. The coin itself, the dimension and the description of the coin is, is a blend of those two opposites. Sim, same thing with the idea of a, an ocean shore. How do you get the shore of the ocean? Because the wave is coming in, but at the same time, the wave is going out. And the, the combination of the wave going in and the wave going out creates the shoreline, it's the beach. It's pretty interesting. It's a very, um, this again is a fractal. It's a principle of creation that, uh, you know, a law of the universe, it behooves us to understand it. It's a very deep one. But when it comes to the, this whole idea of mourning and re rectification and joy, restoration of joy, and this time the joy is permanent and internalized and infinite and has expressed it, all of its negativity. So now all that's left is the wisdom that was learned and the integration that happened. So there's no potential for any more damage. It's all good at that point. That's the building process. So you want to look at everything and especially Tishva, because that's what we're talking about, as, um, as a, having an inner and an outer. Everything is created with an inner and an outer. It's just another way of looking at Dabar Vihipucho, the thing in its opposite. But it's maybe a, a little bit of an easier way or deeper way to connect to it. So on the outer is this illusion of this worldly plane that um, <laughs> has been very persistent and now is starting to shake in front of our eyes, right? But not necessarily in positive ways that we can initially see. So the outer is the, is the separation, the outer is the playing field, the outer is the world of free choice where we can exist and work ourselves out, fight our battles, make our mistakes fall, learn from them, you know, not just in one lifetime, but throughout the lifetimes that we are reincarnated, not just as individuals, but as collectives. But as we learn those lessons, we're building new consciousness, we're building new emotional um, capacities, we're building more authenticity. Maybe I want to talk about this in the next slide. I really want to talk about, um, about entanglement and autonomy and authenticity and that whole process. But, um, but since it's, the, it's Tisha Bible, I'll focus on that for now. But we're building that. We're building, we're disentangling from all of the false ideas and all of the illusions that God created and that were perpetuated by the mistakes that resulted from that initial creation process and plan so that we actually, humanity has activated almost every kind of evil negativity and mistake that is possible. And hopefully we're in the process of learning from them. And the learning is cumulative. So even if we forget from one lifetime to another, the building of the vessels of consciousness, the changing of the nature of nature that's been accomplished throughout, the, throughout these thousands of years is going to stand for us. And all, it's like you build the circuit, we built a complicated circuit, you know, from a waterfall to a, um, a generator to a distributor to, a, to a, you know, a whole system of, elect, of electric, whatever, circuits, I don't know what I'm talking about, um, but with all the circuitry is there, and now all that remains is for us to turn on the lights, and that's what this is about, and that's what I am speaking to now, and whenever I get on the speak, we need to turn on the light. That's what this period in history is about. So we're seeing the outer. First, the outer is a solid illusion. You can't see through it. For millennia, only the holiest of holiest of people can see through it. Now, almost everybody can see, you know, you can, you can see how your, you know, synchronicities and you think about something and you can draw it to you or you can repel it from you. These are thoughts that are so sophisticated and not believable. But to us, they're just almost a matter of course, especially in the last 10, 15 years. You need to see that this is part of turning on the lights. This is part of the divine process. We're seeing the inner. So the outer is the separation, the playing field, the place where, where things are created and break so that we can internalize the wisdom, the light, form the vessels, grow, evolve. And as we do the inner, which was always there, 
the inner was always there. That's the point. There's nothing that has to be created, so to speak. Everything was always here. Also, likewise, in your own life, your potential was always here. The things that you dream about, the things that you came down, that your soul is keeps coming down in order to co-create, they're already here. What is not yet necessarily fully here is the consciousness and the emotional alignment and then the empowered action to reveal them in actual physical reality. So the physical is only the outside, inner and outer. It's the outer layer of what is. The inner layer, you know, the, oh, the in, in Kabbalistic terms, the Olam HaSia, the world of action, the physical world is it comes, the world of action is predicated and follows, it's just the outer layer of the world of thought, which comes from the world of desire behind it. And ultimately everything goes back to Ein Od Nilvando. There's nothing here but God. So on Tisha B'Av, and as we are, are leaning into that, I'm encouraging everybody to focus, to see if you can tune in, you know, tune your receptors inward. We, we want, if, if you're Jewish, it's very advised to keep the law, the Torah law that helps to align and actually bring down a higher light, believe it or not. Little side, little side point. Um, when I was in college, I, for a couple of years, I studied um, Shotokan Karate. I, I never was very good, but, I was, but my teacher was um, a fifth degree black belt who had learned from ninth and 10th degree black belts um, in Okinawa when he was stationed there. <clears throat> and he brought the, the president of the Japan Karate Association to our dojo more than once and the second in command and some very famous people. I saw some very famous um, martial arts masters in those years and it was quite spectacular. And I remember once um, there was a tournament of different, different types of karate and I watched and in, if you're familiar, you know, uh, if you're not familiar, I'll tell you that they're in, in martial arts, especially I know in karate, they're, they're, there's something that fixed um, forms, like they're choreographed defense and offense fights, imaginary fights against a number of opponents. So they'll have a blocking movement, they'll have a punching movement, then, the, the, then you spin around and then kick the person behind you and then, you know, punch the person to your left. Um, and I, and the, in the tests that they did for the black belts, there are various levels of black belt. They're the first brown belt going to black belt, then it's the first degree black belt. And then the first degree black belts would test, you know, for the second degree black belt when they were ready. And likewise, the third, the fourth, that's as high as those tests went at that tournament because um, it was, it was a, that, it's pretty high. It's not that many people that go beyond that. But it was so fascinating to see that the more advanced the student was, the practitioner was, the more exact their movements were the more, the less like freestyle, like a person who was, you know, just beginning would be flopping all over the place. The first degree black belt had the movements down, exactly. But you could see such an ease, so easily see the difference between the first degree and the second degree in the perfection and precision of the movements. They were more precise, more exact, the higher they went. And yet the energy that moved through them was so much more powerful. And that's what it, that's what the Torah law is. And I want to just say that also it's divine. It's a divine kata. It's a divine choreography that is created literally through infinite wisdom and will that gives us that practice to create the form and structure. Again, a divine form and structure that's cosmically divinely designed to bring out our own inner light. And that's why it's so important. I just wanted to um, bring that out. I don't know if it's brought out often enough. It's not meant to be a burden ex other than in the sense that, you know, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. We're meant to become more precise, more divine in our movements. And in doing so, not to express less of our real light. Yes, it calms the beast, but to express more and more of who we authentically are. And that's what I want to end with. The inner light of Tisha B'Av represents the emerging inner. Inside the structure of the exact, you know, don't eat, don't drink, don't this, don't that, do this, do that, remember the destruction. We're taught to focus on the reconstruction, the, the, the renewal, the rebirth, the rebuilding that will be eternal, that won't just come from heaven from above, like a random gift that we could break. 
but will come from our wisdom, from our collective, progressive, cosmic and personal evolution, the revelation of our souls in our bodies, the revelation of that light of the authentic self that's full of joy, that's full of passion, that's full of divinity, that's co-creates. That's what's meant to be brought out in Tisha B'Av. And that's what I'd like to just, and that's what's meant to be brought out in these times because that's where we are right now. We are seeing in our world the destruction, the shakeup of the outer, specific, specifically because it's time for the emergence of the inner. Again, we're seeing the breakup of the outer, the shakeup of the outer. We're seeing everybody's bad habits coming out. We're seeing all the dirty truths, all the you know confusion that one person thinks A and the other person thinks the exact opposite. Remember, everything and its opposite exist together. It's all inner and outer. Got to guess which is the inner and which is the outer, right? Which is disintegrating, which is emerging. So for that, you have to become more wise. You all have to keep becoming more wise. That's part of the job. But anyway, the, the core remains that this is a time that is a, it's like a hinge, Tisha B'Av, tonight till tomorrow night is a hinge between the destruction and the redemption, between the gullis and the Gi'ula, between the separateness and the oneness, between the outer shell that has perpetuated the suffering that, um, that, that, that has come to be called the human condition. War, internal war, you know, everything that death, jealousy, poverty, exploitation, um, self-hatred, hatred of others, all that stuff, that's the gullis, that's the outer. And it's here for a reason. But as it breaks down, let it let things move you, like I keep saying. You know, we, we, we feel, I used to think about this a lot, we come into the world, we're so vulnerable, we're so, um, you know, clueless, I mean, even as we're born as babies, we're totally vulnerable and totally clueless. And then we've got, you know, the DNA, the traumas that are embedded in the DNA, the past lives that we've forgotten. You know, the soul agrees to come down, but the but once it's in the body, it has amnesia. So it's like we really don't know what to make of our universe. And it's fear is like a core experience for most of us. Even if it's not up front, it's in the back background all the time. The only thing that, like they say, you know, the only thing that's inevitable is death and taxes. So um, taxes maybe. Death is meant to be removed from the world, but we don't know that. So people try to get their ducks in a row. We try to get enough money. We try to get enough, you know, looks. We try to get enough honor. We try to get enough friends, enough influence, a, a better house, enough, whatever it is. It's all totally normal, but it's not going to give us a revelation of the true essence of who we are. It's fine to keep trying for those things, but you want to know that they're only a vessel, they're only a comfortable platform for the revelation of the deeper self. The inner is trying to emerge. It's time for the inner to emerge. And as the darkness increases, as the polarity increases, Tisha B'Av being the hinge point where the new light starts to come in. Let's focus on the light that's coming in. When we look at the vision, let's not focus on the vision of the past, of the destructive process that had to be. Let's start to lean into the inner emergence of the vision of the future, which cannot be destroyed. It's destruction proof. And that, again, is because we built it from the inside out. We built it through bl blood, sweat, and tears, literally. And now we don't want to be stuck to the blood, spread, sweat, and tears. Yes, keep the same, you know, the laws, keep the same kata, keep the form. That's the platform for the expression of ultimate self for now. But... What's really, what we really want to focus on is the joy of the future, the emergence of your own inner self, the emergence of a new world, the emergence of the divine light, the emergence of divine, infinite, divine love and blessing for all of us. So with that, I just want to wish everybody um, an easy fast. If you're fasting, if, if it happens to be that Mashiach comes now, that the, the, that the Geula the climax of the Geula is now and the temple is rebuilt. There will be no fast, not now, not ever, on Tisha B'Av. Um, but meanwhile, if you're fasting, it may be easy. If you're not fasting, if you're not Jewish, whatever it is, just it doesn't, that, that then you don't need to have an easy fast. But the, the fact remains that this is the cosmic reality. And I invite you to step up, to connect to it, to lean into it, to keep your vision forward. And that's the last thing I want to end with here. 
that it's easy to look back. If you're familiar with the story of Lot and his wife and Sodom and Gomorrah, um, that story where God uh, destroyed those cities because they were incorrigibly evil and perverted. So um, he allowed Abraham's, Avram's nephew Lot to escape with his family and the angel that was leading them out said to Lot's wife and said to all of them, don't look back, don't look back. And the wife of Lot, she turned around, she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. I think she's melted into being the Dead Sea at this point, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, it, it speaks to me so much. We don't want to look back except for wisdom and lessons learned, empowering lessons learned. Look forward. If you look back, it's, gonna, it's going to um, activate the defensive, vulnerable, get your ducks in a row and keep them in a row program, which was never possible and is super not possible now. Look forward relentlessly look forward into the light of the future. It's explicated in the Torah. It's reflected in the vision of your own soul. It's very, very present in the chazon, in the vision that's associated with this time and in all of the prophecies and all of the signs of redemption that are coming into being literally in front of our eyes. So I'll leave you with that and many, many, many blessings for the most transformational ninth of Av that ever was and maybe that ever will be. Lots of love. Take care, everyone.